I'm here with the 2015 Toyota Tundra Platinum Edition. And let me tell you one thing, if you got small man syndrome, that's the cure. The one thing I can say just looking at this truck for the first time is this front end is just preposterously large. It is so aggressive, so masculine, that uh, I almost get a complex driving it. See, there's even a Tundra badge that's stamped into the steel on this truck. In fact, the muscularity of this, this vehicle is so intense that most of the American truck people I've talked to said that this would give them a couple extra inches just by sitting inside of it. I have to check those feet for hair. Well, you don't look like a hobbit, but you sure look like a hobbit standing next to this thing. What do you think? It's too big. I hear that a lot. <laughs> I bet. I'll tell you one thing. Getting my brain into the big truck mentality for this one, it's gonna be difficult. Why would somebody buy uh, the Ford and Chevy and Ram equivalents over this? I don't get it. Because they rather have an American pickup truck. But this is an American pickup truck. But they don't, it's a Toyota, it's a Toyota. <laughs> they don't look at it that way. And that's what's kind of strange about trucks. You know, and I said this and I'm gonna say this. When you're not a truck person and you look at something like this, you, I just can't comprehend why it's so simple and why it's so much money. But at the same time, you know, I guess if you were really a truck person and you were using it for utility, you wouldn't want all the complications of modern cars on it. Yeah, but then you look at the Ford and the Chevy, it's like driving, it's a Cadillac inside. I mean, this is pretty fancy inside too, but. What do you think of this truck compared to like Chevy, Ford, Ram? Well, Ram's the best, though. That's in its own league. Oh, it's in its own league? Why? That's a Dodge Ram. This guy's Hemi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I don't know. If I was buying a pickup truck, I would buy this before anything. That's a pretty big endorsement coming from you. Mm -hmm. So you would... As long as, well, as long as there's a nice warranty on this frame from rotting out. So what, what's the highlights of this? What do you think? Like in terms of, it's got four piston front calipers, which probably almost all the trucks this size do. Mm, I don't know. No? No, they usually don't have this kind of caliper. At least stuff that I see. Or well, when they do big brake kits. Oh, big, they do big brake kits yeah. on it? Uh, the trans cooler looks like it's uh, water cooled, but that could be also heated up. Probably, so it looks like it. It also has, it features on the front lower control arms dual eccentric bolts that's going to get you well because these control arms are so huge i'm sure you need to adjust both to get an <laughs> even even alignment but overall this truck looks extremely simple it's underneath simple. there's nothing underneath underneath right? I think the engine is where all the complications are what are we looking at here scott i force I 5.7 IV8. What's all the I stand for? <coughs> I have no idea. Intelligent. Oh, this looks tough. Mm -hmm. Real tough. Pretty basic. I wouldn't want to do a timing chain on this motor, but. I don't think you'd have to do a timing chain, you just have to do a tensioner. <laughs> So let me tell you, if you're on the fence about what motor to choose for the Tundra, well, let me help you out with that. The 
5.7 liter V8. It's really the most obvious choice. And there's a couple reasons for it, because it doesn't matter which motor you choose, you're only gonna lose a couple points in miles per gallon when it comes down to it, maybe three to five miles per gallon. Uh, and that's because this is a 5,700 pound truck. It's big, it's heavy, and this 5.7 liter is perfectly suited for it. With 400 pounds of torque, it makes it just ridiculous to drive every day. It makes it, it makes up for some of the shortcomings and even the fuel economy. I can say, you know what, if I'm buying a truck like this, I can deal with 13 miles per gallon when you have a ballsy ass motor like this. I'm trying to get caught up with all the different things about full size, mid size trucks. And the one thing I can tell you, and I'm not gonna bullshit you right off the bat, I am not a truck guy. There's no way. I am a, I'm a car person, but I obviously am heavily interested in the automotive world because I've just been dabbling in it for so long. With trucks, there's a lot of people that will say leave truck reviews to truck people, and there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, there's no way that I'm ever going to give you a competent review on hauling, towing, or any of that. The only thing I can attest to is driving a truck uh, and talking about the dynamics of driving a truck. The manual mode in the transmission really isn't all that advanced. I mean, you could select your gears, but it doesn't really do any rev matching. So the gear changes are ugh, not particularly smooth. But the Tundra is constantly electronically controlling the power delivery. You can always feel this truck cutting power, modulating the power based on conditions. And when you're in certain uh, elevations or downhill or lateral movements, the, the truck is smart enough to tell the transmission, hey, downshift the gear and it will actually hold gears. Uh, but you really need to be in more elevated areas, um, more areas where it will trigger those those g-forces for the trans to react. Other than that, I find that if you really want to control the gears, you have to go into manual mode. There's just really no way around that. This truck suspension with no load on it is easily upset. Uh, if you start getting on, like we're on concrete right now, you get these expansion joints that just kind of make the truck hop a little bit. And if you're on power, uh, the, the traction control system is immediately cutting in and constantly modulating the power. The one thing that remains consistent about the Tundra is the steering effort. It just always feels light. Uh, there's rarely any feedback on just driving on normal roads, um, but that's probably a good thing. Now when you get into the Tundra for the first time, there's just no doubt this is a truck interior. Um, and in some cases, I feel like they are just trying way too hard to make this look tough and like masculine. Uh, that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing, but right from the steering wheel, right from the get-go, the steering wheel just feels huge. The diameter's big, it's very truck-like. The center stack with, again, uh, an embossed Tundra logo. Uh, the knobs are big and meaty. And it, great tactile feedback, of course, but they are just, just tough and rugged feeling. The Platinum Edition gives you a little bit better quality materials inside, like the leather, uh, the upholstery feels better, the materials just feel more quality, but there's still this plethora of plastic, uh, metal look trim. Uh, my biggest complaint about this interior so far is the plasti chrome that they put over the gauges and over the gear selector. I find that they're super reflective, and because this car is bright and wide open, uh, the door handle chrome is huge, the chrome in the center stack and around these rings, I constantly am blinded in sunlight. So that's one of the things that really annoys me about it. Now this is kind of a first that I've seen uh, with infotainment, uh, and I haven't seen it this bad on many cars. Now the infotainment is quick, it's functional, 
Uh, it's not the most advanced system ever on this Toyota, but the display is so poor quality on here. I don't know if it's part of the, the matte finish on the screen or what it is, but it's extremely hard to see in bright light. It doesn't matter what my brightness settings are. Uh, I've played with that in any type of light, it looks washed out. Now, if you're wearing a set of polarized sunglasses, you can absolutely forget this. Uh, it's really, really difficult to see. As you'd expect with a truck of this size, there is no, you're never gonna want for any more storage. There's seven cup holders in the front, two in each door, three in the front. I'm never like, oh, I wonder where I'm gonna put that, especially up here. The center armrest is legitimately the size of a coffin. I could bury my entire uh, pet tarantula collection in here and have no issues. There's a little storage nook for your phone here. It would be nice if they had an inductive charger for your phone uh, with the newer phones. But other than that, uh, storage space is amazing. Yeah, the one thing I really can't get used to is how oversized everything is in here. Uh, from the controls to this adult toy size shift knob uh, to the door handles, which make me feel like I need to be Wesley Snipes to, to, to utilize them properly. Uh, you just feel small. And I think that's the intimidation factor of driving this truck is it just feels so big all the time. From when you're on the inside to the outside to when you're piloting it, I, it's hard for me to switch off that mindset of why is this so big? You know, if you have the crew max cab, when you open those back doors, they are huge. The back doors are bigger than the front doors. And literally it's something that you could probably pull off and put on a tank for shielding. It's so big. The back cargo room or the back space for passengers is monstrous. I don't remember being in anything but a limo recently that has so much space in the back seats. But again, there's plenty of cup holders too. On paper, this is not best in class uh, on a lot of fronts. Uh, it's not even one of the top selling, top three best selling large size trucks. Um, and it's not that there isn't a reason for it because it, what it lacks in some things, it makes up for in reliability and dependability. And even your American car guys are not gonna argue that with this Toyota truck. Uh, the motor is super smooth. The interior capacity, volume, and fit and finish is really good, uh, but it's still got that truck-like ride. Um, the transmission is not as modern as it should be. The infotainment lacks in some areas. The screen just is garbage. Um, there's some things that just rub me the wrong way, and the biggest thing is it's just an intimidating, overly wrought, big-feeling vehicle inside and out and that's one thing that i just couldn't get over this whole time with this car now, if that's what you're into my god this is going to take care of it for you right away there's no nothing to deter you from putting this on your list to cross shop against the the american trucks and let's face it it is an american truck when it comes down to it